Good Monday, everyone, and welcome to this edition of Conversations Daily News. I'm your host, Cyrus Webb. Glad you all could join us once again. Well, it's a brand new day, it's a brand new week, and can you believe it is literally the last week of October? Man, this month has flown by. For today, we, of course, have your news headlines coming up. We have the truth of the day with Mary Ellen Saganovich, and in today's Entertainment Spotlight, you've been part of my conversation with meteorologist Jonathan Porter, joining us from AccuWeather to help you guys prepare for this year's storm season. Enjoy today's broadcast. For Conversation Daily News, I'm Savers Webb with your Monday headlines. In international news, Africa tries to end vaccine inequity by replicating its own. In a pair of Cape Town warehouses converted into maze of airlock sterile rooms, young scientists are assembling and calibrating the equipment needed to reverse engineer a coronavirus vaccine that has yet to reach South Africa and most of the world's poorest people. The energy in the gleaming labs matches the urgency of their mission to narrow vaccine disparities. By working to replicate Moderna's COVID-19 shot, the scientists are effectively making an end run around an industry that has vastly prioritized rich countries over poor in both sales and manufacturing. And they are doing it with unusual backing from the World Health Organization, which is coordinating a vaccine research, training, and production hub in South Africa, along with a related supply chain for critical raw materials. It is a last resort effort to make doses for people going without and the intellectual property implications are still murky. Some experts see reverse engineering or recreating vaccines from fragments of publicly available information as one of the few remaining ways to redress the power imbalances of the pandemic. Only 0.7% of vaccines have gone to low-income countries so far, while nearly half have gone to wealthy countries, according to an analysis by the People's Vaccine Alliance. That World Health Organization, which relies upon the goodwill of wealthy countries and the pharmaceutical industry for its continued existence is leading the attempt to reproduce a proprietary vaccine demonstrates the depth of the supply disparities. In national news, Biden and key senators huddle as Dems drive toward budget deal. Deadline-driven, President Joe Biden brought two pivotal senators to his Delaware home on Sunday for talks aimed at resolving the disputes that have stymied the Democrats' wide-ranging social safety net and environmental measure at the core of his domestic agenda. Beyond the domestic timetable, Biden is pressing for progress so he can spotlight his administration's achievements to the world leaders at overseas summits that get underway this week. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi says she expected an agreement on a framework by week's end, paving the way for a House vote on a separate $1 trillion bipartisan infrastructure bill before next Sunday when a series of transportation programs will lapse. That's the plan, she said on Sunday. The House and Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer and Senator Joe Manchin came to Biden's home in Wilmington on Sunday where he was spending the weekend for the session but did not immediately provide a statement detailing what they discussed. Manchin and Kristen Sinema, two of their party's most moderate members, have insisted on reducing the size of the enormous package and have pressed for other changes. Pelosi said she was waiting for the Senate to wrap up talks and was expecting a plan to be introduced as early as today. I think we're pretty much there, said Pelosi, stressing that a few last decisions need to be made. In more national news, crew member who gave Baldwin gun subject a prior complaint. A crew member says she has raised safety concerns in the past about the assistant director who authorities say unwittingly handed actor Alec Baldwin the prop gun that killed a cinematographer on a film set. Maggie Gall, a prop maker and licensed pyrotechnician, said in a statement that she filed an internal complaint with the executive producers of Hulu's Into the Dark series in 2019 over concerns about the assistant director Dave Hall's behavior on the set. Gall said in a phone interview Sunday that Hall's disregarded safety protocols for weapons and pyrotechnics and tried to continue filming after the supervising pyrotechnician lost consciousness on set. Hall's has not returned phone calls and email messages seeking comments from the Associated Press. Baldwin fired a prop gun on the New Mexico set of the film Rust last Thursday, killing a 42-year-old and wounding the director who was standing beside her. In business news, the Associated Press asked, where are the workers? Cut off of jobless aid spurs no influx. Earlier this year, an insistent cry arose from business leaders and Republican governors cut off a $300 a week federal supplement for unemployed Americans. Many people, they argued, would then come off the sidelines and take the millions of jobs that employers were desperate to fill. 
Yet three months after half the states began ending that federal payment, there's been no significant influx of job seekers. In states that cut off the $300 check, the workforce, the number of people who either have a job or are looking for one, has risen no more than it has in states that maintain the payment. And finally, in entertainment news, despite hybrid release, Dune draws well at the box office. Dune debuted with $40 million in ticket sales in its opening weekend in North America, drawing a large number of moviegoers to see the thundering sci-fi epic on the big screen, despite it also being available to stream at home. Cyrus Webb, Conversations Daily News. It's now time for the Truth of the Day with Mary Ellen Teganovic. Mary Ellen, take it away. This is Mary Ellen with your Truth of the Day. Live an authentic life. Your true self exists and is sometimes buried under fears or learned behavior. This true self is an elusive concept as most of you define yourself by the roles you play throughout life. Your self-concept is further hidden by the fact society prompts you to suppress your intelligence, your uniqueness, your emotional and spiritual brightness. In truth, you are all light beings in a physical body. Your true selves exist whether you acknowledge it or not. My hope is all of you will bring your light forward as you stop burying your light under fears and negative societal teachings. Today, shine your very special and unique light upon the world as you always go about to enjoy the day. Meteorologist Jonathan Porter is joining us in today's Entertainment Spotlight. We're here on Conversation Daily News. For Conversation Daily News, I'm Cyrus Webb with the Entertainment Spotlight. Meteorologist Jonathan Porter from AccuWeather joined me recently on Conversations Live, the radio show, to talk about what you need to do to be prepared for this year's storm season. Here's a bit of our conversation. All of us already this year are seeing it, but what are the critical new improvements, Jonathan, you're seeing when it comes to weather communication to help keep us safe? Well, we've seen a lot of a significant uh, amount of severe weather uh, that's been making headlines all around the world, as you mentioned, Cyrus. And that's a reminder to us all about the increased volatility of the weather and the need to be prepared in our communities here from Jackson to all around the country. We've been focused here at AccuWeather on delivering rapid severe weather warnings through the AccuWeather mobile app and the AccuWeather.com website. We deliver severe weather warnings faster than any other source in our mobile products. And that's a really important component when extra time, extra seconds can mean the difference to actually getting your family and loved ones to a safe place when a tornado is threatening, for example, or to get to higher ground during a dangerous flash flood is just one of many examples. So we've been really focused on the mobile technology and building out all of those great capabilities ranging from the instant alerts to the interactive maps to let you track storms as they're approaching you on our AccuWeather.com website and our mobile apps, which are easy to download. Is there a way uh, through the technology that you're discussing here to protect against the winter weather risks that we see and events that normally are associated with this time of year? Sometimes Mother Nature doesn't abide by the calendar, and we can deal with tornadoes during the winter when they're certainly less common in Mississippi, but still can occur. Same thing with flash flooding and dangerous winds and other types of of weather concerns as well. So it's really important to be tuned in with the weather all through the year. Cyrus Webb, Conversations Daily News. We thank you all for tuning in to this edition of Conversations Daily News. Provide you guys on tomorrow for news, Truth of the Day with Mary Ellen Teganovich, and of course your entertainment spotlight. Until then, I'm your host Cyrus Webb saying as always, enjoy your day, enjoy your life, enjoy your world, Thank you all for choosing Conversation Daily News today. Let's make it a great one.